Life trying to mind my business. I never understood mix of time with business. I rhyme with swiftness, heroic quickness. Try to figure out what a nigga's gift is. For all I know, I could be good at this. And if not, I'll work at it until my shit pops like a soda can on a summer day. But ain't no summer games. I ain't come to play. What up, you guys? Maurice Woods here. In the past few times I've jumped in front of this camera, I said, wow, it's been quite some time since I've recorded. We're going to get right to it. First, I'd like to start off by saying that uh, any energy that you're feeling, any negative energy, any low vibrational energy frequencies that you're feeling, I embrace them. I'll receive them from you and transmute them into love and send it back to you. Positive energy, higher frequencies to help you cleanse yourself, renew yourself, find yourself feeling uh, cleansed, blessed, rejuvenated, Palo Santo, Sage. Well, the sage lit. No Palo Santo. Selenite. Peach selenite at that. I've actually never seen this before. This actually caught my eye the last time I was in the crystal shop. <sighs> Take a deep breath, man. Just take a minute to be, take a minute to breathe to embrace everything, all the senses, the sight, taste. I have gum in my mouth, but I can taste the smell of the sage and of the grass and the trees that are around me. You know, embrace everything I'm hearing, the birds chirping, the squirrels that are running around, the people that are walking, the kids that are playing. and an actual sense of smell, you know, smelling the sage, smelling my deodorant, smelling the mint that's in my mouth. But I wanna get to it. First off, I wanna say I have like quite a few, uh, quite a few videos that I'm sitting on and I've been sitting on it for quite some time. I still have stuff from Costa Rica. I have quite a few things from Costa Rica that I haven't put out yet. And then I have this other series that I'm like working on. But the purpose of this video is to just share, like I've been hiding from the world and like one of the first things that comes to mind is like the Drake lyric where he's like, I wasn't hiding my son from the world. I was hiding the world from my son or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like I understand it and it's actually become like part of my reality. Everything is so social media driven right now. Everything is so out of tune, out of whack. People don't know themselves. People aren't living for themselves. People aren't feeling their own emotions, their own thoughts and stuff of that nature. And I caught myself feeling that way. Um, I've been hiding from the world. And let me, from the world, right? Because I'm out here in nature. This is the world. The world isn't this what's on the phone you know what I mean and it actually struck a chord in me yesterday out of the many things that I've experienced during this period of time where I've kind of been incognito MIA and whatnot it struck a chord for me because I was watching this interview uh, Kanye West and Joe Rogan and one thing that Kanye said is that only 1 billion people use the internet and we have 7.8 billion people on the planet and then we see a lot of these things that happen on the internet and we feel like it's life, it's the world, it's the reality, when in reality it's not. In reality, 
so many of us that use all of these technology, all these gadgets, and I'm recording on a camera and all of that stuff with a microphone and all of that, like a lot of us end up being out of tune. A lot of us find ourselves being out of tune and don't even recognize it because this is what we've created our lives to revolve around, what we've created our lives to be. I've been in a state of introspection. I've been in a state in like a hermit crab state. That's what I've related it to. But in this state, God has been talking to me. The universe has been talking to me, sending me signs, and it would just be disrespectful for me to not embrace these signs that the universe is sending me, to just continue to ignore the signs. Now, mind you, uh, we'll say, we'll just call it a state of rest. We'll just say that I was resting, I was dormant. But even in this state of being dormant, God still spoke to me. The universe has still spoke to me, whether it was angel numbers, whether it was the animals that I was seeing or finding out in random places. Whether it was the interactions that I was having with random people. There's this one like snippet of an interview that I love of 50 Cent, where he's in the projects or whatever, something like that. And he's like, you know, my grandfather told me you only get as far as the people that you talk to for no reason. And then when you, you kind of think about it and you're like, well, dang, like, what if you just talk to a homeless person for no reason? Does that mean that you're going to become homeless? No, that does not. Because everybody has something that you can learn that they've already experienced. Everybody's been through something and you can learn from their experiences to become a better version of yourself. As they say, a wise man learns from another man's mistakes. You know, I have to make sure I said that right. I've been taking the time to surrender and to just be open to everything. And in this state, you know, mind you, Mercury retrograde was a quite a period, you know what I mean? And in one of the videos that I've recorded that I just haven't put out yet, I've stated like, I feel like I've been out of whack emotionally, mentally, a lot of the things that I perceived for myself have not been able to come into fruition and not even less that would be pessimistic not a lot of the things that i've seen for myself just some of the major things that i've seen for myself have not been able to come into fruition because there are so many things going on in the world that are bigger than myself and one of the issues is you have one billion people that are so magnetized to their phones and social media and the internet and all of that that we create our worlds through these things and it takes us apart from what really feeds our soul, our hearts, our minds. I've been blessed during this period, without a doubt. And as I mentioned, these interactions that I've had with people, you know, I went to Costa Rica and I still stay in contact with the people that I've met in Costa Rica. The people that helped my trip in Costa Rica become such a learning experience. Like you can't just go to another country and stuff not go your way and say, wow, okay, uh, I'm going to go back home. It's not just literally like a two hour drive back home or whatever the case is. Like I had to figure it out. And on a microscopic plane, it gave me the blueprints for the macroscopic plane, for me to see things from a small scale and see how it translates to a bigger level. And then I feel like, wow, I have this message to share with the world. And because you have one billion other people that perceive their world from what they see on the internet without doing their own research and stuff of that nature, you know, it's like, well, how is my message gonna resonate with these people? Not even like changing their mind, planting the seed. That's all I care about, planting the seed and nurturing the seed. I want, I want to help people find their selves. I want to help people create their worlds, shift their paradigms, shift their perspective, shift their reference points, you know? 
and just see things from more than just one plane, one dimension. Because that's not what life is. Life isn't just one of everything. Like there's so much duality to life. And a lot of us don't take that into consideration. And like I said, you know, me feeling like I have a message to share with the world and not knowing how that message would be received with the world or received from the world. You know, I've already been a, you know, I, I deleted Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. I've used Reddit. I feel like Reddit is a place where uh, there's good outlets for news, but I feel like a lot of the news, just as any other location, is just as biased, you know? And on there, you have a dislike button, you have a downvote button. And anybody that's quick to disagree with what you say, like, will downvote you into oblivion and get other people to downvote you into oblivion, you know? And I had an attachment to that stuff. I had an attachment to that stuff, and then I just had to remember, none of it defines who I am as an individual. This internet stuff doesn't define who I am as an individual. It's the things that I'm out here doing in real life. Taking my little sister to school, the interactions that I'm having with my siblings, helping my siblings, being there for my siblings when they feel like they're at their lowest. How can I help provide the comfort and the space for them to grow, to inspire, to teach, to love? You know what I mean? Before I left the house today, my sister wanted to take pictures, my four-year-old sister. We did this yesterday. We sat in the grass, walked barefoot, meditated for a little bit, and she wanted to do all of that again. This is what I want my life to consist of in the future, in the present, because I'm learning from the past. I've always been told, if you know better, do better. And I found myself in a period, well, if I don't go out of my way to learn better and I just don't do anything, then that puts me in a safe space when in reality it just makes me ignorant. Ignorance is bliss, right? But I didn't, I didn't really have much of a sense of bliss in this state, whatever state I was in. I felt tormented. And because I felt tormented, I was hiding from the world. I was, I was running from the world, from the world, right? When in reality, the world that I live in is the world that I help create. I hope all of this is making sense. Like we have to just do a better job. Reanalyze our lives and create the lives and the worlds that we want to live in and stop basing our, our lives and thoughts and emotions and feelings and on stuff that just doesn't doesn't matter at the end of the day we create these things to matter to us we create the attachment to these things to matter rather than practicing the law of detachment you know and that doesn't mean just kind of like not experience with the world but it means how can you reflect on yourself to create the kind of life and energy that you want to put out there Earlier, I mentioned interactions that I'm having with people, conversations that I'm having with people, the energy exchanges that I was having with people. I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. I don't know what exactly he's saying, but I feel like I'm agreeing with what he's saying. And I think this is just perfect timing, you know, for him to walk through while I'm recording this and while I'm sharing this. I spoke on the interactions that were taking place. People reading me, seeing me, feeling me, and sharing with me. You know, there are clairvoyant people that are around me. There are spiritually in tune people who are around me and here it is that I feel like I'm in this state of hermit. And everybody's like, no. What are you doing? God has blessed you with way too much, way too many gifts. Like that was something that, that took place when I was in Costa Rica, specifically when I did my drawing therapy. And Mr. Bruno was like, hey, 
This indicates your gifts. I have three. This is speaking from his perspective. He says, I have three. I already felt like I was a rare individual to come across. Here it is, you have six. You just randomly show up in Costa Rica, everything worked out a certain kind of way. You stumble into our house, you st not into their house, but you stumble into our yard and introduce yourself and, you know, this wasn't how you had things planned, but this is how the universe had things planned. What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are you supposed to be on this planet to do? You know, then the clairvoyant people, the sensitive people that are in my circle, and when I use sensitive, I don't mean sensitive emotionally, I mean spiritually. Hey, what are you doing? You're a teacher. Why are you not teaching? Why are you hiding? Why are you not accepting responsibility like you should? God has blessed you way too much for you to just sit back and allow yourself to be average. Allow yourself to run away when you're not feeling the best. Instead of going inside of yourself, reflecting, fixing whatever it is, and then sharing this with the world, sharing your lessons with the world, going back and teaching and accepting whatever kind of, whatever, whatever kind of backlash, whatever, whatever, whatever it is you receive. And that doesn't mean that you're going to receive backlash, you know, but we just live in a world where, you know, things can be misconstrued and, you know, not everybody's going to agree and so on and so forth. But you have to stop being fearful of that because that's not what life is about. You're not on this planet to fear. You're not on this planet to be scared of other people's judgment. You're on this planet to live your life and live it in a manner that is morally correct. But then again, who defines what morally correct is? Morally correct is as long as you are not hurting people. So I feel, this is my definition. I've gotten to a point, I've grown to a point where I want to just love everybody. And that doesn't just mean, oh, you know, like, like you can love people from a distance too. Like, keep that in mind. There's the duality of things, like I mentioned before, there's the duality. You can love people up close and personal, and you can love people from a distance. But my goal, for me personally, is no hatred. You know, even the things that I dislike, okay, I dislike that but let me look at things from another perspective, from another paradigm. Let me make sure that my paradigm itself is not muddy, is not, uh, is not dusty, and that I'm seeing things clearly, you know? So one very meaningful interaction that I had, my sister and I, we go out to go eat. And my sister, she had a pretty, uh, not traumatizing experience, but she had an experience that kind of shook her a little bit, a spiritual interaction where she ended up seeing this individual, this energetic individual, this spiritual individual at our grandmother's house. So my grandmother called somebody over to handle this spiritual case. And they resolve the issue and they communicate with a very dear relative of mine, an ancestor of mine watching over me. And uh, this individual, this individual talks about how, where our lineage come from, talks about the gifts that we have, once again, gifts, specifically mentioning that I'm a gifted individual, this aligning with what I learned when I was in Costa Rica, what I embraced when I was in Costa Rica right but they also say hey in this ether where i am in this ether where i am there are stars placed everywhere and the stars have names to them uh, with them assigned to them right so each star has a name but they're names of people that are here on this planet and this individual goes on to say that the star with my name is one of the stars that's shining the brightest. 
And I just couldn't like, my sister sharing this with me because she was like, I'm gonna share this with you, but I don't want it to blow up your head. I don't want it to make you, f I don't want it. Like, it humbled me because I, as I said before, like I've been blessed with way too much to just sit back and, you know, live, in, live on this planet, live in this, in this realm and just question everything and be not miserable, you know, but not the most content that I could be, you know? I have so much to live for. I have so much to give. I've learned so much over the years. I've learned so much over the years. And it doesn't make sense. Like I've, I've been told, you know, like everybody comes here with a gift to share with the world. And to not share the gift with the world is selfish. And I think that's already one of the main issues with the world is there's so many of the people that are elites aren't necessarily thinking about the greater good for everybody. They're only thinking about the finances that they can generate by exploiting everybody. You know what I mean? So me coming out of this hermit state has to do with me realizing that I have so much to offer and that it's a slap in the face to everybody that believes in me. First of all, it's a slap in the face to God for giving me the gifts. It's a slap in the face to everybody that believes in me and that has believed in me and that's shown me love and people that I don't even really know. As I said, these interactions could be with random people and you can feel the sincerity. You can feel how genuine they are in these expressions, in these actions, in these energetic exchanges. It's a slap in their face. It's a slap in my own face because that means that I'm just stagnant. That means that I just sit here and I don't use my gifts to help others. But yet I'd complain about the state of the world not being what I expect it to be. Even though me having an expectation is wrong in a sense. But it's like I can't have an expectation of what the world should be like or what I want to see in the world and I'm not doing anything about it. And with that being said, I, I hope that me sharing that things are shifting for me helps shift things for you and that you start to realize what gifts you have. And if you don't know what gifts you have, because I was, you know, six, which is actually one of my favorite numbers, along with eight. But six, I don't know what all of them are. I could say being a teacher, I could say being great at manifesting things, empathetic, and some people may, may not feel like I'm the most empathetic, but I've gotten to a point where I've no longer, I no longer allow other people's emotions to consume me. That was one of the biggest things for myself. I allowed their emotions to consume me. You cannot be a healer and get too intertwined in what's really meant for other people to experience. Because then you'll ultimately enable people to get to, you'll enable people to not grow in the direction that they need to grow. So now, I mean, I'll take what's given, the energy that I feel, the emotion that's felt, I'll bring about solutions as best as possible, a listening ear, a shoulder to cry on, a shoulder to lean on. But I don't allow myself to get too attached to this stuff anymore. My godmother told me that uh, shamans have to hollow themselves out like bones. That way the energy, that way the message passes through to who it's really intended for. I hope that everything that I'm sharing helps inspire you. Stop being stagnant. It's time to grow. And growing pains exist for a reason. It shows you that your activity is to soon cause an eruption like a volcano. You have the tectonic plates and when they're stressed, they cause volcanoes to erupt. And when volcanoes erupt, the magma creates new land masses. And then you have the air 
You have other creatures that pretty much pollinate these new land masses. And that's how life is created. You can't grow without it. You can't live without it. And with that being said, I wish anybody and everybody watching this peace, serenity, love, and the courage to grow. The courage to not allow yourself to remain stagnant. It's okay to be stagnant temporarily. Feel what you're feeling. Feel the emotions. Don't cry about it. Grind about it. And I'm not saying don't cry. But I'm saying the grind is what will get you further than just crying about it. That being said, you know, may peace be unto you all.